Don't you wish you had instant replay over some of the decisions you've made this fantasy season? I sure do. Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Shahadi and you're watching Fantasy Move Makers right here on CBSSports.com. This season has been a distant replay of the season Fernando Tatis had back in 1999. It's now 2008, but he's tearing it up once again. It doesn't help his cause though that Ryan Church was declared healthy, which means Tatis will have to split duties in left field. Here's why Church gets his position back even even with a recent performance by Tatis. He's got the stats to back him, guys, and before the concussions, he had emerged as a must-start in fantasy. He should be added in all NL-only leagues and most mixed formats if he's available, among other guys to go the distance with. Nelson Cruz, he went three for five with a bomb in his major league season debut to leave Texas over Kansas City, nine to four on Monday. Welcome to the bigs, right? Hideki Matsui also going long for his 500th career RBI on Saturday against the O's. He's showing some power in his DH at bats, making him an intriguing injury risk sleeper in the deeper leagues down the stretch. Listen, Emat considers this next guy to be the next Chase Utley, Ian Stewart. He's been a good sleeper in all leagues. He'll play full time either at second or third down the stretch. Hank Blaylock doing time at first base because of continued soreness in his shoulder preventing him from playing third. Perhaps he can prove he has power in his condition and in his position. J.D. Drew will have a new position, but a familiar position from years past on the shelf. The Red Sox all-star right fielder was placed on the 15-day DL with a lower back strain after not playing since the 17th of August. When Drew's healthy, he's a must start, but he may not be back until mid to late September. Perhaps you might not have the shelf space to store him. Well, he hits a lot, strikes out a lot, and now he's injured. Alex Gordon was placed on the 15-day DL because of a torn muscle in his right quad. He was hitting 254, was second on the team and with 14 home runs, and still has a lot of upside, but he could miss the final weeks. Ian Kinsler, did you ever think you wouldn't start him? He leads the majors in runs and paces Texas in batting average, doubles, and stolen bases. He's a must-start when healthy, but he's not. Garrett Anderson is just one for 10 since his 23-game hit streak ended on Thursday, and he has that knee injury to deal with, so they may rest him for a couple games. As for Jerry Hairston, he is battling a hamstring injury. We all know that hamstring injuries can be a bit nagging. Hairston's no exception. He might be dealing with this injury for the rest of the season, so stash him if you can. Well, I'm not done. There's more joining me on the other side. Stick around. Welcome back. Tim Wakefield is back, back from the DL and delivering. Tightness in his right shoulder is not stopping him. Wakefield is 7-8 and eight with a 3.67 ERA and 23 starts and is having one of the best seasons of his career. He was expected to return after missing just two starts, but the trade for Paul Bird slowed things down a little bit. He's pitching for a team with a chance, so pick him as a low-end mixed league option down the stretch. Adam Wainwright is dominant as well coming off the DL. He was out with the sprained middle finger, but is working hard to prove what he proved before the injury, that he can throw the baseball, not just in a closer role. We're talking most added pitchers, and Wainwright is a no-brainer. Also a no-brainer for the Red Hot Rays, Dan Wheeler. He notched himself another save Saturday against the White Sox, pitching a perfect ninth and striking out one. What about Jensen Lewis? Well, he's been giving the Tribe their first fantasy-relevant closer of the season. The Tribe keeps winning. He keeps saving. Simple math here, guys. Well, the Pirates aren't giving him a chance, but when they do, he's getting it done. Matt Capps pitching a perfect ninth on Sunday, the first time he saw the field since July 1st. Luis Ayala hasn't recorded a save since he was traded to the Mets, but he should be added in all NL-only leagues and most mixed formats if he's available. The Oakland A's are all about injuries, and Justin Dukeshire is right there with them. The all-star righty went back on the DL Thursday because of a strained hip. His ERA is the second lowest in the major leagues, and he may be out through September. George Sherrill's days as the O's closer may be coming to an end due to a shoulder inflammation. By the time he comes back, it could be too late. Could be also too late for John Main if he returns from the DL because of a bone spur in his right shoulder. The Mets need him, he wants to be there, but he doesn't want to go if he can't go 100%. Eddie Guardado loses value because he won't be a closer down the stretch. Sean Markham, who missed 27 games earlier in the season with a sore elbow, is 3-2 with a 6.19 ERA in seven starts since coming off the DL July 22nd. He struggled with location since his return. The best location on the web, you found it, cbssports.com. I'm Lauren Shahadi, I'll see you next time.